Hi there, my name is Chuck McCullough, and this is our Learn It Short series, where we spend about five minutes focusing on a particular feature in programming. Today, we're gonna to be looking at tuples in C Sharp. So let's dive in. What we're gonna cover in here is, just as a quick overview, what is a tuple? We're gonna talk about unnamed tuples, named tuples, as well as projections. So first of all, what is a tuple? Well, in mathematics, according to Wikipedia, a tuple is a finite ordered list of things. In C Sharp, a tuple is a lightweight type, a syntactically lightweight type, that's really easy to declare, that holds an arbitrary list of elements. So it's like declaring a class or a struct, but without having to go to all of the syntax to create that. It can uh, be a value type, and that's the language default as a version seven. It can also be a reference type, like a class. The difference with a tuple, however, is that it only contains fields. It only contains public fields. It doesn't have methods or properties. Mainly, we're gonna run into tuples as a return from a method. When a method needs to return more than one object, rather than returning an array of objects or something arbitrary like that, we can return a tuple. So think about a tuple as the same as a struct with all public fields and no methods and no properties. So how do I create a tuple? Well, let's start with the unnamed tuple. This is the simplest. We just define the tuple by creating a comma separated list of objects inside parentheses, and that's it. The compiler sees this and generates a struct containing public fields. The names of the public fields will be item one, item two, item three, etc. The fields will be of type, whatever the types of the parameters are, in this case, string, 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 int, int, int. So our car info variable has five fields, item one, item two, etc. through item five. This is an example of an unnamed tuple. Now, a named tuple is a lot more valuable because the unnamed tuple, the names of the fields, item one, two, three, they don't really carry any semantical meaning, so they're not as helpful as they could be. So with the named tuple, we can assign names to those fields. And it's pretty easy to do. We just put the name of the field, then a colon, and then the value we're associating that name with. So now we have name value pairs. So the example we have here, we've now created a make model trim package, the gross weight, the MSRP, the year, etc. Before those fields were not really clear what they were, we can access the fields using either the item star field names, the built-in field names, or we can access them using the named field names like make, model, etc. As of C-sharp version seven, we can also do what are called projections. The compiler will automatically name tuple fields based on the variable names used to initialize the tuple. So in this example, the name of the variable containing the value Jeep is in a variable called make. When we initialize the tuple with the variables, those automatically become the field names of the tuple as well. The traditional item star names are still available, so we can still use those as well. So projections always work unless the variable that we're initializing the projection has the format of item one, item two, etc. or to string. Those are both reserved words in a tuple. Or if a literal is used, then the name of that field simply becomes item, whatever the number is. And the items are always one, two, three, four, five, starting at the beginning. Even if uh, there are some field names that obscure the uh, item, they still maintain the sequence. So a tuple is syntactically a lightweight type that's used for data only complex types. No methods, no properties. Tuples can be named or unnamed. You can explicitly name the fields or you can let the fields be named by the variables that are used to initialize them called a projection. This is very useful for return types. And what's really cool about it is that the compiler includes metadata or annotations in the tuples definition so that the calling code can know what the field names are. And the IDE, Visual Studio, can also provide assistance with that by auto-suggesting the names of the fields as well because they're included in an annotation. All right, I hope you enjoyed our discussion of tuples. Uh, pretty interesting capability in C Sharp where we can define a simple data composite on the fly with very simple syntax. 
Hey, I'm Chuck McCullough. As always, code happy.